Hey everybody, my name is Danielle and I want to welcome you to our virtual campus. I am so excited to have you here with us today and I am definitely excited about this new series, This is Kingdom, where we'll learn about the king, the kingdom, as we navigate through our everyday lives. Listen, life gets hard, right? But we know that we have a savior, friend, and king who overcame all of it. And that's exactly why we're here. So with that said, let's get ready to enjoy service and enjoy us from wherever you are. Jesus, Jesus. So I want to bring some of you up to speed of where we are. We've been in our new series. This is for those in the back that didn't hear it. We're in our new series. This is kingdom, 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 kingdom. Oh, my goodness. Has this been good to you? Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, be honest. Has this been good? It's been a good message for you. Good series. The, the whole point of this series is that we're teaching on the message of Jesus. We're teaching on the message of Jesus. What does that mean? We're teaching the message Jesus taught. Plain and simple. We're teaching the message Jesus taught. Jesus taught a very specific message. And still to this day, churches ain't been able to grab a hold of it. For real. Many churches today, we teach Jesus, but we don't teach what Jesus taught. Many churches today, we teach Jesus, but we don't teach what Jesus taught. Many churches today, we teach Jesus how to get in a relationship with Jesus, but we don't teach how Jesus lived. There's a lot of things he did that just wasn't wrote down, but it's, 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 it's displayed before you in the Word. Mm. So a lot of churches, we haven't really grasped this concept of kingdom and, and, and teaching this. This is why we've been going so hard on it. What's crazy is there, there are so many great teachers that have been teaching on this, like Miles Monroe and uh, Tony Evans and... and Michael Todd and Jerry Colbreth. Yeah, y'all better make some noise. Make some noise for my dad. They've been teaching on kingdom, and what's crazy is with the vast amount of churches and communities around the world, that's just a slim few. There's only a slim few congregations even having this conversation. That's why we're going so hard on it. And, and we believe that this teaching, it's, it's, it's important. Why is it important? Because this is what Jesus taught. Really simple. It's, it's what Jesus taught. And I think, I believe, if Jesus taught it, maybe we should too. Amen. If Jesus taught this message, and he says, be like me, maybe... We used to teach the same message. Makes sense, right? Yeah. But we don't. Yeah, yep, yep. Air just left the room. We don't. And so we, uh, here at Tradstone, we're just trying to do our, our part here in, in Bond Hill by making sure this message goes out to the world. So if you've missed some of the series and some of the, some of the moments, they're available online. You've got to go back and start watching. Got to go back. Gotta go back. I'm gonna give you a quick little recap here. We think this message is so important. We believe it's so important because it's what Jesus taught. Jesus even said, watch, here's it, hear this. Jesus even said, I was sent to teach this message. Jesus, why were you sent? To teach this message. Really? Yep, I was sent here to teach this message. Proof is in the word. Look at Matthew 28. Well, before I say that, yeah. Matthew 28 says, Jesus was telling the disciples, I need you to go and teach the same message I taught. Go and train people in the same message that I've trained you in. Go and disciple people with the same message that I've, that I've trained you in. Teach them. This should be rich upon your lips, another scripture says. This should be rich upon your lips. It's that important. That important. Luke 4. Watch what Jesus says in Luke 4. Luke 4, 42, 43. 
At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. Here we go again. Jesus disappeared. They woke up in the morning. He was gone. For real, that's what happened. They woke up in the morning. He was gone. It says the people were looking for him. And when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. They wanted him to keep preaching, keep teaching. And then the next verse says, but he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also. Why? He says, because that is why I was sent. What? Jesus, you need to stay here to come teach us. I got to go. I got to go teach people this message. For what? Why are you leaving us? Because that's why I was sent here. Uh Uh-oh. That's why I was sent here. I was sent here to teach this message. But I thought you came to save. That's part of this message. I thought you came to deliver. That's part of this message. I thought you came to set the captives free. That's part of this message. But the overall thing, the reason why I'm here is to teach this message. Jesus was saying he was sent to earth to tell us the good news of the kingdom of God. That's what he said. But oftentimes we read that and we don't even know what that means. We stop at good news. Jesus came to teach the good news. That's just part of it. Good news, he gave, he was very specific. Couldn't get it out. Good news. (laughs) He said, I've come to teach the good news of what subject? The kingdom of God. Very direct. I've come to bring you good news about what? The kingdom of God. I didn't come to just tell you about me. I've come to tell you about the kingdom of God. I've come to tell you about the king and his kingdom. But this whole thing is about about Jesus. It's actually about the king and his kingdom. That's why Jesus was saying, I was here to, I'm going to sit here to teach you that it ain't just about me. Everything that you see, everything that you know is about the king and his kingdom. Now, I want us to go a little deep. Get your notes out. Get your notes out. Yes, Lord. We got to have some understanding in here. As we dig deeper in this series, this is kingdom. Jesus, what he told them is, I was sent to teach the good news of the kingdom of God. In this time, there was a word that he used. In Greek, the word would be euangelion. I was sent to euangelion. That was, that's what I was sent for. I was sent to euangelion. That's a Greek word. What that word means is good message. I was sent to bring you a good message. Now, when you look deeper into what this word means, it's a message that has favor. I was sent to tell you a message that has favor on it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to catch it. Good message. This message means, Jesus was saying, I've come here with a message that says everything in your life is about to change. Everything that is going on in this world is about to turn in your favor. That's what he's saying. I've come with the euangelion. A word for you that will change everything and everything that happens afterward is going to be in your favor. You and Gileon, I've come with the you and Gileon. And why is it good? Why is it good? This is a message that says everything's going to work out for you. Can you imagine Jesus telling people that? I've come with the message that says everything's going to work out for you, Orlando. I've come with a message that says everything's going to work out for you, Timani. I've come with a message that says everything is going to turn in your favor. Wait a minute. A message from who? Because you can't forget. That was just the good news part. A message from who? I've come with a message from the king that says everything's going to work out for you. Come on, wait. We're going to get there. Jesus was saying, I've come with the euangelion. I've come with a message from our king that says everything is about to work out in, everything's about to work out for your good. I've come with a message of favor for you. 
Jesus was saying, it's so important that everybody hears this. I can't just stay in one place. I have to go tell everybody that there is a message from the king. And he's saying, all things are about to turn around for your good. Jesus said, I've come with a good message from the king and his kingdom. I've come with the euangelion. Now, here's what's crazy. I was studying this word. I said, God, go deeper. So then as I started studying this Greek word, euangelion, I found an article that says this word is only used during war times. Uh Uh-oh. The word euangelion is only supposed to be used when you're talking about war and having favor in war. So what Jesus was saying, though, she already got it because y'all didn't catch it yet. What Jesus was saying, there's a war going on and I've come with a message from the king that says you win. (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. Jesus was saying, There's a war going on. You may know it, you may not. But I've come with a message that says everything in this war is about to turn over in your favor. Mm -mm. Jesus was saying, I've come with the euangelion. He's saying, hear ye, hear ye. I have a message from the king. And he says, all things are about to work out for you. Hear ye, hear ye, all things are about to work out for you. That was his message everywhere he went. Hear ye, hear ye, everything's about to work out in your favor. Hear ye, hear ye, all things weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. Hear ye, hear ye, God loves you and he's looking out for you. I believe he's still saying that same you and Gilly on the day. Hear ye, hear ye. Michael, all things are going to work out. Hear ye, hear ye. I'm looking out for you. Remember a war term. Hear ye, hear ye. There's a war going on. And I've come with a message from the king. That says, you are going to win. Woo! Can you imagine what it felt like to hear Jesus say that? That was his message. Hear ye, hear ye. The king has arrived. And all things are about to turn for your favor. Oh my God. Jesus was saying, I have a message directly from the king. Jesus was trying to make it very clear that there are two things, there are two kingdoms fighting right now. That's what this term means. There are two kingdoms fighting right now, and I'm on the winning side. And I've come with a message saying, you need to join this side. Because we're going to win. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. I want to dig deeper. I want to dig deeper. For context, John 18 New International Version, Jesus was saying, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is from another place. Jesus was trying to let them know, my kingdom created this world. So that means my kingdom has all authority over this world. He was telling them, I may have been born here, but I'm not from here. I may have been born here. I'm giving you information today. I may have been born here, but I'm not from here. I don't belong here. Jesus said, I will sit here with a message from the king of all kings. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Here's where it gets interesting. So I'm like, I, I, I want to know more about this word, good news. So I said, okay, that was the Greek. That's how it was broke down. But then I said, well, let's look at the Hebrew. Is it okay? Can we look at how it was stated? Good news in Hebrew, the word is basar or depending on your dialect, vasar, which means tidings. Tidings means 
a fortunate message. A fortunate message. What does that mean? We hear the word fortunate and don't even know what it means. Fortunate means unforeseen favor. I've come with a message that has favor on it that you didn't even know you needed. I've come with a message that has favor on it that you didn't even expect to come. When he says, I've come with a bazaar, I've come with a message that has unexpected fortune. I've come with a message saying, things is about to work out and they're gonna work out a certain way in a way that you didn't expect. That's what he was saying. I've come with this message. I'm like, oh my God. So Jesus was saying, hear ye, hear ye. I've come with a message that you couldn't even plan for. Oh, hear ye, hear ye. I've come with a message that exceeds far beyond what you can imagine. Jesus was telling them in Luke 42, Luke 4, 42, he said, I have a message that will benefit you during this wartime and you couldn't even expect how it was going to work out. It's going to work out in a way you couldn't have planned for. Unexpected favor, un, unforeseen favor. You didn't deserve how this war is going to work out. Mm. Mm. Somebody yell out, preach the word. Jesus was saying, I'm, I want to make sure you understand this before we move on in the series. Jesus was saying, hear ye, hear ye. You didn't plan for it to work out this way, but be prepared because the kingdom of God is upon this world. Hear ye, hear ye, the kingdom of God is now on the offense. Imagine these are war terms he's using. What is he teaching? He's teaching about war. I'm teaching you about a king who has said this war is now over said, I'm on the move now. That's what he was saying. The kingdom of God is upon you. The king is here. The king is here. The king is now on the offense. And in this kingdom, we don't lose. We win every time. Jesus was trying to let them know, I'm here to prove that the king has all, has all authority over this world. Life, death, hell, and the grave. And he's on the move. Mm. I don't know why we don't teach this. When I say the kingdom of God has come upon you, I'm letting you know that the king is declared checkmate. Now, as he's having this conversation with people, now, trust and believe, they knew God was going to do something. They knew it. They knew God was going to do something because they knew prophecies like the back of their hand. They knew it. They knew the word. And in Daniel, they knew Daniel like the back of their hand. They, the, the, the word was, and in these days of kings shall, shall the God of heaven set up his kingdom here, which shall never be destroyed. They knew God was going to show up and set up his kingdom. And when he does it, they're not going to lose. The problem was they just didn't know what it looked like. They didn't know what it looked like. But then Jesus shows up, and Jesus says, hear ye, hear ye. The king has arrived. Hear ye, hear ye, and I have brought the kingdom of heaven with me. When you hear people say, hear ye, that means hear me. I've come with the message. Can you imagine... He's saying wartime. So this was, this was a term used by like bannermen. You know what a bannerman is? Someone just waving a banner of their kingdom. Can you imagine two, two kingdoms fighting and somebody runs on a field? Hear ye, hear ye. I got a message from the king. And the message is we win. Because Jesus was trying to say this message in front of everybody. Everybody could hear it. It wasn't being told in secret. Hear ye, hear ye. I have a message from the king who rules over all of this. We win. 
The enemy heard it. And all of us heard it. Mm, Jesus was trying to let them know, hear ye, hear ye. I have brought all power and authority of the kingdom of God with me. The king has arrived and I've brought all power and authority from his throne with me. I have good news from the king. Jesus was trying to let them know every chance that he got, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Whose side are you on? The kingdom of God has come upon you. Whose side are you on? He was saying, the kingdom of God is making a move. The kingdom of God is on the offense. The kingdom of God is here. Everything is about to change. Jesus was making a declaration. He was saying, I'm I'm coming with a message. And I got to tell everybody. And in this message, here's, here's what he was saying in this message. He was saying, for God so loves you. That was the message. For God so loves you that he's willing to do whatever it takes to bring you into his family. This was the message of Jesus, saying God so loves you that he's willing to do whatever it takes to bring you into his family. And once you become a part of God's family, you are automatically enlisted in the army of God. And you have a responsibility in this war. And that responsibility... Let's bring up a new word here. That responsibility is to commit treason in the enemy's camp. We don't know what treason means. That responsibility is to commit treason in the enemy's camp. Can, Can I explain what treason actually is? Treason. Here's a definition of treason. The act of overthrowing a kingdom you live in by implementing the agenda of another kingdom. The act of overthrowing a kingdom you live in by implementing the agenda of another kingdom. And God says, I'm calling you to commit treason here. Mm, Let me explain it even more. When you commit treason, you're trying to bring over the agenda of one king into the kingdom of another king. When you commit treason, you're bringing in the agenda from one king into the kingdom of another. When you commit treason, let's go deeper, you're demonstrating the authority of your leader and king in a foreign land in hopes to shift the culture. You're bringing forth the agenda of your king in another kingdom in hopes to shift the culture. Is that not what Jesus called us to do? Yes, that is. Exactly. That's right. That's what he's called us to do. He's called us to commit treason in this world. Who's the king of this world? Satan. The Bible says that. John, it wasn't a trick question. <laughs> Satan. No, no, it wasn't a trick question. John 12, 31 says that Satan is the king of this world. He's the ruler. He's the authority here. But then God says, I'm calling you to commit treason in his territory. Mm, That was the message. Hear ye, hear ye. I'm calling you out to go against the grain. I'm calling you out to be the salt in this unseasoned world. In this unseasoned potato salad. I'm trying to make it make sense. Somebody said, with the raisins. I can't. (laughs) I'm calling you out to be the light in this dark world. Watch this. Colossians 1.13. I promise you, this is just information for you guys. I, I, I wanted to kind of do like a subtle recap of where we are. Colossians 1.13, New International Version says... This is what Jesus has done for us. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. What did Jesus do? When Jesus came, 
He brought us, he rescued us from the dominion of this king's world. Jesus was saying, hear ye, hear ye, I have come to rescue you from the kingdom of this world. You don't have to live under the craziness of this world. You don't have to live under sickness, pain, and defeat, and darkness anymore. I have come to rescue you from the hand of the enemy and enlist you into the family of God. Hear ye, hear ye. I've come to save you. Save you from what? Save you from the hand of the enemy. Save you from his kingdom. And now salvation is making sense now, right? Because it, it ain't about hell. Hell is the absence of God. That's how, it, that's how it's defined. Hell is the absence of God. I didn't just come to save you and to bring you to, to heaven. I've come to save you from the king of this world. I've come to rescue you from him. Because if you're a part of his kingdom, there's a lot of craziness that goes down there. Hurt, pain, betrayal, backstabbing, sickness, defeat, trauma. I've come, God says, I've come to rescue you from that and bring you into my kingdom. Mm -hmm. You don't have to live in this crazy world. They missing the part that you don't have to. I've come to give you a choice. That's what he's saying. I've come to preach this good news. That's what, it's a good message. But you got to choose to believe the message. You got to choose to accept the message. It's not, uh, practical. I can have this big house, DeMarcus, big old mansion. And I show up and I say, DeMarcus, where my keys at? I paid. I paid for this mansion. I don't want you living on the street no more. It's yours. But you have to accept the fact that I paid for it. And be okay with that. You have to accept the fact that I paid for it and be okay with that. Don't take the keys and then start looking for a bill. We're missing that. Don't take the keys to the house and start worrying about what bill's coming if I told you I paid for it. But there's a way we live in this house if you take the keys. Because I paid for it. I did. I paid for it. But I still have rules and guidelines in my home that I want you to abide by. But if you do that, you can have it. But the rules are easy. You can have the, you can have the house, the keys, the car, the dog. You can have it. If. You agree to just represent me here in the earth. If you agree to just tell people about me. But don't lie about me. Don't lie on me. Just tell them the truth about me. And then you can have it. You can, you, this, this, this house is yours. And then God says, and guess what? Even if you mess up, I won't kick you out. I won't kick you out. You can mess up the house. I won't kick you out. This was the message of the king. Mm. Jesus said, I, not only did I rescue you from the hand of the enemy, from the dark world, but I made you royalty. Now that's the part of his teaching we don't talk about. I made you royalty. Royalty. How do I know this? Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. Watch this. You can put the, put the chairs up there for me. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. But God is so rich in mercy. Listen very closely to what he says. God is so rich in mercy, he loves us so much that even though we were spiritually dead, and doomed by our sin, what that means is even though we belong to this world, Scripture talks about you got either he, you're, you follow the Satan or you follow God. That's what it says. Either he's your Lord or God's your Lord. There's no in between. And this Scripture says, 
even though you didn't deserve it. He brought us back to life again. Even though you didn't deserve it and you were doomed to live in that kingdom, he says, when he raised Christ from the dead, only by his undeserved favor have we ever been saved. You didn't do anything. You weren't good enough to be saved. There was nothing you can do for, me to, for him to save you. It was just because he loves you and he shows mercy to you. That's it. Just because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Just because he loves you, you didn't deserve it. But he says he rose you up. Verse 6 says, and lifted us up from the grave into glory along with Christ. Where we sit with him in heavenly realms. All because of what Christ did. We tried to talk about this last week, but I felt like I didn't get a chance to really explain what, <laughs> what I wanted to explain. When Christ gave his life for you, he paid the price. Here's the evangelical message. He, prayed, he paid the price for your sin. The way scripture says the wages of sin is what? Death. And when you die in those sins, you have to live eternity absent from God. Is that not what we learn? Jesus came and he said, I'm going to take upon all of your sin on me. Because a, sac- a death had to be the price. I'm going to take upon all your sin and I'm going to take it to the grave with me. Uh, yeah, thank you God should have went there. And I'm going to take it with me. And then God, being the loving father that he is, he raised Christ from the dead. Now this, watch what the scripture says. Demarcus, you're going to be Christ. Can you be Christ for me? You're, you're Christ-like. I know you. <laughs> I hate Demarcus' face. Come on, Orlando face. <laughs> you're Christ-like. God says, Jesus, I'm going to raise you up from the grave. I'm going to forgive you. And then Jesus says, but I'm not, I can't come alone. I want to bring all of them with me. And God's like, cool. Because what separated them from me, you paid the price for. So now when I look at them, I see you. So you're welcome into my kingdom, and so are they. So God says, I'm going to raise you up. And I'm going to sit you right here. And God's like, this is my seat. But he says, all of you can come too. And I'm going to sit you with him. That's what the scripture says. He rose you up from the dead, from the, from the grave with Christ. And you now can sit in heavenly realms with God. Why? The question is why. Why? Because you're royalty too. That meaning you have access to sit with Christ. What this means is everything that he has, now I can get too. Because if the throne is here, he's here, and I sit with him, that means I'm at the throne too. Lord Jesus, help me explain this. That, that means I'm at the throne too. He welcomed me into his throne room too. That's why the Bible says we can come boldly. We can come boldly here and sit with Christ again. Boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy. We can come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain whatever we need. Watch this, say that. Because the scripture even talks more about it. Ephesians 1, 3, watch what this says. God brings, he resurrects Jesus, he brings him to heaven. And then says, you can come too. You can come to heavenly realms. You have open access to heavenly realms too. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
What did we talk about last week? Blessed be God and Father. He's God and Father. He's God and your Father. Blessed be God and your Father. Watch what it says. Of Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. Who did he bless? Us. With every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Wait a minute. God is saying, when I rose Jesus from the grave, everything that I bless him with, I bless you with. When I rose him up here, I've given him a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of authority, a whole bunch of power, and I gave it to you too. Because the scripture, when it talks about seated in heavenly places, it's, it's talking about a place of authority. It's not just physical, but it's talking about a place of authority. If I gave him a place next to me, the God who rules and reigns over all things, I've given him a place next to me and called him my son. I've given, the scripture says, I've given you the same place. And I'm calling you a son just like him. I'm calling you a daughter just like him. Your royalty. Mm, have a seat, Marcus. Oh, my God, we're going to close this thing out, but I, I, there's, there's a couple of things I just need to share. It says, you're a son just like Jesus. That's why Jesus said to the disciples, when you pray, you got to pray from a place of being a son. Wait, wait, because... Even though these are different books and different chapters, it all makes sense. Jesus is not going to say anything that doesn't make sense. He says, when you pray, you pray from a place of being a son first. You could say, our father. He's my father just like your father. He's your father and he's my father. Because we sit together with him. And he's telling them, you need to pray from a place of authority too. Because if you're a son... That means you have the same authority Jesus has. That means you're royalty. So that means you're a prince of this kingdom. You're a princess in this kingdom. To make it make sense. When you understand that, the game changes down here. What do I mean by that? Matthew 6, Matthew 16, 19. Here's here's how Jesus explains the game changing. Oh, my God, this is so good. I love teaching. My my five-fold ministry gift is teacher, so this stuff excites me. It may not excite everybody else, but this stuff excites me. Matthew 16, 19, the NIV version. Watch what it says. Jesus is talking to Simon Peter. We talked about this last week. He's talking to Simon Peter. He asks Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter gives this crazy revelation. Well, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. Jesus says, wait, I didn't tell you that. Only, you could have only heard that from God. Jesus says, out of that revelation, here we go, out of that revelation, When people begin to understand who I am and accept who I am, because Peter just made a confession, and confess that openly, the scripture says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He told Peter Peter that. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. We say that, and we don't know what it means. What Jesus was saying, whatever you need heaven to do because you now have access to heaven because you now have the keys to the home of heaven you now can come boldly before the throne of grace whatever you need to happen here heaven will make it happen and bring it down that's that you can come boldly before this throne God this is what I need my auntie needs healing and because you at the throne, you can talk to God. My auntie, father, my auntie needs healing. And he's like, okay, because this is what we do here. We, it's, it's, there is no sickness up here. Just bring a piece of this down here. Bet. 
and then I'm giving it to my auntie. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. We don't understand that we're conduits of heaven. That's why Jesus was saying, when you pray to God, you need to pray from a place of knowing who you are and know who you're talking to. God, I'm talking to my Father that I have access to. Then he says, you used to be praying things like this, on earth as it is in heaven. The only reason you can pray that is because you have the authority to pray that. What he was saying is, you can pray what I need in heaven. If there's no sickness in heaven, then I can create an atmosphere here where there's no sickness. I'm just bringing my kingdom into this world. We got to start saying my kingdom because it's not just his kingdom. It's mine now. I'm a part of the family. I'm royalty now. So if there is no sickness here, then I just need to bring that type of atmosphere here. He wouldn't say you could come boldly if you couldn't come boldly. That means you could come and ask the most ridiculous things of your father. The things that don't make sense because you have access to do it. If there's no addictions here, and I'm praying with somebody who has addiction, all I need to say is, Father, you've given me authority. And there's no addictions in heaven. God created a space here. Of heaven, bring heaven down. Use me as a conduit of heaven, like a lightning bolt. This type of healing from addiction that we get when we come, when we raise from the grave and we get to go, so we be with you. God, strike it down, bring it through me, and let it let it just shock her whole body. You have access to bring all of heaven here. Jesus wouldn't say you can pray that if you couldn't. He's not a lofty talker. He'll just say stuff that, and, and it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. He said, you can pray for heaven to come down because you have access to heaven. You can pray for heaven to come down because heaven is now a part of you. Mm. Mm. And if in heaven, if there's no sickness in heaven, if, I mean, if there's no, 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 no lack in heaven, then you shouldn't have lack here. And if you feel like you do have lack, what do you do? I need to go before the throne. I need to talk to my father. Well, God, you said in heaven there's no lack. But I'm feeling lack here. Well, God, I'm coming to you. Can you, do you mind taking the wealth of the wicked and depositing that into my bank account? Because you said that's what you would do if I need it. But the problem is, we don't understand who we are, we don't understand whose we are, we don't understand our authority, because nobody's teaching this. So we sit here lost in in darkness, serving under the king of this world. But then God says, I snatched you out out of his kingdom, and I brought you into this one. And I said, whatever you need, you can come to me and get it. There's another scripture that says, if you pray in Jesus' name, he says, I will answer. Meaning, if you pray with the authority that I've given you, I will answer. And if, you, if I'm not answering in the timely manner that you want me to answer, you can come boldly before me and talk to me about it. And I will share with you what I'm doing. You have a seat at the table. We don't operate in kingdom authority because we don't understand our seat at the table. When you realize you sit with the CEO, yeah. Come on. when the CEO is making decisions, you're right there. Yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. This, living a life like this, that this is kingdom. Yeah. Being used to commit treason in the kingdom of this world. This is kingdom. This is kingdom. Bringing forth the atmosphere of heaven here in the earth realm. This is kingdom. It sounds very mystical and superhero stuff. But I just believe in the word and that's what it said. That's what it said. That's why he said... You can go lay hands on the sick. You have the authority to lay hands on the sick, and they shall be healed. 
You have the authority to stomp upon serpents. You have the authority. Because you, the way you live doesn't abide by what this world does. The king of this world says you can't do that. The king of this world says when you got cancer, you stay with cancer and you die. But the kingdom of heaven says you live. You can live and have life more abundantly. What flips the switch is believing it and knowing it. How terrible is it to be a CEO in a company and not know you're the CEO? How t that's crazy to be the boss and not know you have that authority. Hmm. Sit to your feet. Jesus. This is kingdom. This, this type of life is kingdom. And this is why we're teaching this. Because it's, it's a different type of way of living. It's a different type of way of praying. It's a different type of way of sowing. Brother Orlando talked about it today. There's a kingdom concept that comes with sowing. God says, if you sow, I'll grow it. That's a kingdom concept. We don't do that because we don't really know. God says it's time out for us not knowing who our father is. Do you think just the enemy's doing that in the natural world? Having people not know who their father is? He's doing that in the natural and he's doing it in the spiritual. He's trying to get you to under, to, to not to miss the fact that God is your father. And you have authority here. I think it's time for us to start committing more treason. I think it, it's time for us to start committing more treason. This is, God says, this is why I called you out. That was the message of the king. Yeah. I've, I'm calling you to commit treason. Yeah. I'm calling you to go against the grain of this world. I'm calling you to actually really be a light. So when you see someone in need, see how you can be Christ in the situation and bring heaven there and fulfill it. Check in. God, how, how, can, how can we bring heaven here to this situation? In our world, in our kingdom, there's love. So when you experience people hating on each other, how about you bring what happens in your kingdom to that situation? How about you bring love into it as a conduit of heaven? Somebody said, it's not, it's not so lofty that we, we can't do it. There's a lot of practical things you can really do to bring heaven to a situation. Someone in need, give them some money. Why not? Because God says, your bank account's unlimited. Do you think God, well, because you sold into somebody's life, you think God's not going to give it back to you? Do you really believe that? You think God's not going to give it back to you? Somebody asks for $100 and you, and you give it to them. You think God's not going to give you 100 and more? Every time. Because you're, the way the world works, you ain't going to get it back. But then God says, you're not of that world. You just live in it. Do you not, don't you think he'll protect you and take care of you? Don't you think when you go into dark rooms and, and dark places to, to be the light, don't you think he'll give you the words to say? But God, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to... He'll do it. And even if, because the enemy's going to rise up against you, he will. When, you, when, he, when he realizes you know who you are and who you are, he's going to rise up against you. You might have to be a sleeper agent sometimes. I do. 
sometimes my family, I'm a sleeper agent. Ones that really just don't know God and, and can care less about it. When I shake their hand, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring him. Man, what's up, bro? How you doing? Man, I'm good. What was that you said, huh? Bring Jesus into it. Bring heaven on your job. Just start walking around. Heaven be here. Heaven come. God, do whatever you want to do here. What you doing over there? Ah, nothing. God, do it. God, my boss is suffering with addictions and blah, 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 blah. Touch his desk. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal. I leave a piece of heaven in this room so when he comes in here, he's going to be embraced by who God is. Marisha, I believe crazy stuff like that. I do. I do. Because <sighs> we're peculiar people. We're peculiar people. That was such an amazing message, right? Right. Thank you so much for joining us today and showing your love and support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your family, friends, and loved ones. And for more information on how to connect, give, and get involved, all you have to do is download our app, TSNB Church, or visit our website, www.tsnbchurch.com. Well, that concludes our time here today. We hope you enjoyed it. We love you, and we can't wait to see you next week. Peace.